Hello, welcome to sleephypnosisweekly.com. My name is Jason Newland, and this is Sleep Hypnosis Weekly podcast. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. I do try and do these every week. Not always on the same day, I'm afraid. It depends on what's going on for me. Um, But... uh, I do intend to keep doing one every week. So please forgive my inconsistency on, you know, a particular day. Sometimes there may be seven days in between. Sometimes there may be ten or eleven. But I'll try and do, you know, one weekly if possible. And I'll continue to do that for as long as I can. There are also other podcasts that may be of interest to you regarding sleeping. Uh, My Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast, which is just me talking and being boring really, just for an hour each one. And I think I've got 171 episodes and it's about 180 hours worth on that podcast. And there's the sleep hypnosis. Was it deep sleep hypnosis? Deep. Deep sleep whisper hypnosis. Something like that. Uh, I should know the names of the, the podcasts. And uh, that's quite a regular one. I do quite a few of those a week. And they're, they last about 20 minutes. But it's me just whispering like like this all the way through. Which is good if you like that. But if you don't, then you can listen to these ones. Also, excuse, <laughs> excuse my squeaky chair. I um, have made a lot of sleep hypnosis recordings since 2006 and I've got a couple of podcasts that hold all of those. One is, what is it? Hypnosis for sleeping deeply, um, and that's as well as all the new stuff that I do. It's also got all of the older stuff from years back. Uh, see, a few was was it? No, some of the titles of recordings I've done is uh, "Sleep Like a Baby." Um, Sleep, sleep, sleeping deeply is your birthright. So sleeping is your birthright. Um, the try and stay awake hypnosis challenge. Um, wave goodbye to insomnia. There's, there's quite a few different ones. Like 50, 60 plus. Uh, different sleep sessions and most of them are long they're usually like 40 minutes to an hour a few of them are actually longer than an hour as well and also some of the relaxing sessions I've done and you know that's on a different podcast 
are also really kind of sleepy ones at the same time because even though I don't mention sleeping they are deeply relaxing and some of those last for you know maybe an hour so there's over a thousand recordings all in all that you got to choose from and everything's housed on my Spreaker podcast um, but they're also available on loads of different podcasts so that's the long and boring introduction um, I think maybe to start with there is something I'd like to talk about uh, in relation to sleeping and something that people have told me about uh, feedback that I've gotten is that one of the benefits of listening to my recordings is that I can be a kind of a distraction from those thoughts that some people have whilst laying in bed trying to go to sleep and so I've thought about that I've been thinking and I've had these comments sent to me quite a few times telling me that you know it's sometimes listening to me people forget about those thoughts and then they fall asleep and other people maybe just feel more relaxed because they're thinking about something different so there's a few things that come up there firstly I guess the words trying to go to sleep so sleeping isn't something that you try to do it's not something that you can force it'd be nice if it was as simple as that because willpower some people could possibly will themselves to fall asleep but I think it's I think of it a little bit differently from that if there's an obstacle that is getting in the way of you naturally just drifting off into a just a, a normal sleep then wouldn't it make more sense to just remove that obstacle and that seems to be kind of why I'm looking at today so if you think about it, I'm going to introduce beavers into this conversation. So beavers can block a dam with logs and, you know, things that they kind of do. Beavers, that's what they do, isn't it? Um, they beaver, <laughs> beaver around and they can block the water flow with the logs by building themselves uh, I guess it's kind of their home isn't it it's building their their little town or whatever they want to call it but when those logs are removed the water doesn't ha nothing has to be done for the water to flow it just flows the obstacle is removed so there is nothing needed extra 
once the obstacle is removed. So it's about just removing the obstacle. And if that obstacle is thinking, and a lot of people that have contacted me use the term thinking too much or thinking about things I don't want to think about or um, worrying about stuff and it's as if their mind has kind of taken over that part of the mind the chat and I'm guessing it's not just like a verbal chatter going on there'll be images there'll be uh, I guess flashbacks there'll be thinking about situations in the future that haven't actually happened yet you know just the standard thinking processes I guess but when there's less going on outside seems a little bit more powerful because you can have that same thinking processes going on when you're sitting on a train but you've got the sound of the train you've got the sound of the people on the train you've got the physical um, the feeling of the chair that you're sitting in maybe the physical feeling of other people being very close by you've got the smells of the other people maybe the smells of the aftershave perfume or the smell of the newspaper that someone's reading or perhaps someone's drinking some coffee you can smell that so even if you close your eyes you've still got these other senses that are in some ways overwhelmed So when you've got this thinking, exactly the same thinking processes perhaps going on as you do when you're in bed. But you don't realise that it's the same because you don't feel it the same. Because you've got all these other distractions and feelings this energy that's occurring outside of your body that affects your body the other people the move you know the moving train the sounds just being dressed and sitting in your trousers or your skirt or a tight top or your jacket or coat, whatever it is. It's a very different situation to laying down in bed with hopefully, you know, loose clothing, comfortable, with very little outside stimulation. And two things can happen. We can become more aware of how we physically feel. And we can become more aware of how we emotionally feel. And kind of opens up that portal for your thinking worrying, concerns, all that stuff to arise but you don't have to allow it to stay it 
don't have to keep it there. In fact, it takes energy to keep the thoughts static. Because thoughts are very much like that river. That hasn't got a blockage. It just flows. The thoughts come and go. All day long. Thoughts come and then they go. I notice that happens even during a conversation. Someone will say something to me. And that will stimulate my brain to think of something to say in connection with what they're talking about. And then, then they may talk about something different. They might change direction. And I completely forget what I was going to say. And something else comes up. Because that thought or that contribution to that conversation was no longer required or necessary. If I'd have kept it there, which I could have done, I'm sure, if I'd have stuck to my guns and then when the other person stopped talking, bring them back to what I wanted to ask them that would be a blockage that would be an obstacle potentially to moving forward with that conversation because they're now thinking about something maybe very different and I'm wanting to talk about something that was already being discussed earlier on so we're in different places. It's like we're having two different conversations. And with that water, without the beavers jamming up the dam and making it all stagnant and you know, the water flows naturally, doesn't need any help from anybody, just needs to have that obstacle removed. When you think about it in our mind, the obstacle is our thoughts, but it's not just the thoughts, it's holding on to the thoughts. The thoughts themselves are just thoughts, like clouds. I don't know if you've ever done this, but when I was younger, I used to lie down on the grass on a nice summer's day, blue sky, but with you know white clouds going past, and no matter how hard I tried I could never stop the clouds from moving past the clouds would just move sometimes change shape but they would always move across the sky and more clouds would turn up I try and keep that cloud that I was focusing on try and keep it to stay there but it wouldn't, it would just keep floating by. So instead of just lying there relaxed and watching the clouds float by, which I'm sure would have sent me to sleep, it's very relaxing providing it's not too bright you might need to wear sunglasses or something but it's very relaxing 
and those clouds float by naturally they're going to do it anyway but trying to hold on to the cloud even though it didn't stop because I can't physically stop it it did cause me a degree of distress by putting all my focus on trying to do something that was pointless trying to do something that was of no use at all instead of just lying there and enjoying nature enjoying the clouds enjoying the beauty of the different shapes enjoying the fact that nature is so much bigger than any of us just like our mind our unconscious mind and sleep is so much bigger than our waking state so much deeper so much more profound all that healing that occurs when you're asleep all those thoughts processing when you're asleep we don't need to stay awake for a certain amount of hours in order to function but we do need to sleep a certain amount of hours in order to function so sleeping is more important than being awake in some ways because that's when we process that's a time when we grow and it's not just for children that are growing but growing is part of the healing process. So where our organs replenish themselves. The healing takes place when we sleep. And it's not something that we need to focus on. It's something that we are very lucky to have that just happens. Just like sleep is the most natural thing in the world. We were born with that ability. you think about it babies sleep so easily so can we and by allowing those thoughts to do exactly what they naturally do just coming and going floating across the sky like clouds you can choose to focus on them or you can just choose to just watch them go by enjoying the temperature of the room enjoying the feeling of your body being relaxed enjoying that feeling of restfulness that you actually start to experience the second you lay down on your bed all the stresses and strains and worries and concerns 
don't live in that bed. That bed's just for you, just for your body. It's not there for thinking about stuff. The bed's there for sleeping. Just in the same way as you've got a kitchen, a separate room, a kitchen for preparing food, cooking food, washing up, all that lovely stuff. It's a separate room, generally. You don't do that on your bed. You don't have an oven on the bottom of your bed, a fridge near your pillow. It's a separate thing. The bed is there. To sleep. Predominantly, that's what the bed's for. To go to sleep. See, my dad's got this chair that he slips in. He sl doesn't sleep in. He does, but he's got a chair that he sits in. And he's very busy. He's always, you know, very physically active. He's retired, but he's very physically active. He's got grandchildren, and he's always, he always doing stuff. When he sits down in his chair, and he sits back as a recliner, he's asleep. He's happy. That's his happy chair. That's his place where he always falls asleep, regardless of what's going on. The television can be blaring out, the room can be full of people. Not random strangers, usually people he knows, but he falls asleep because that's his space that's that's how he experiences that feeling of sitting in that chair as soon as he does it's like a trigger and he falls asleep and he's happy But he's got a shed down the garden. He never sleeps down there. Doesn't cook down there. They got a kitchen. I've got a kitchen. I never sleep in the kitchen. I never cook in the bath. I have a bath in the bath. I sleep in the bed. It's called a bedroom. It's where the bed lives. I know that not everybody has separate rooms. I spent nearly 30 years living in one room. Lots of different rooms, but like one room where everything was in it. So I know what it's like to not have a separate bedroom. But a lot of people do have a separate bedroom. A separate place where you sleep. And if you do have a bed that you maybe sit up on watching television you know that when you lie down it's time to sleep it's having those connections 
those connections that fit together so well so easily connected so tightly connected that one leads to two leads to three see in your bed leads to lying down in your bed your body relaxes your head touches the pillow you feel relaxed and calm and you can just observe any thoughts because the only way they stick around is if you focus on them if you just allow them to drift they do what comes naturally and they float by the same way those clouds float by in the sky means there's nothing to do it really is a case of not allowing that obstacle to be there because in a sense by focusing on those thoughts you're creating that obstacle that then blocks that flow leading to sleep leading naturally to sleep because sleeping isn't something you try to do not something that you command yourself to do you can't force yourself to sleep sleeping is something that happens naturally So even those thoughts of wanting to go to sleep, let them flow by. Because the best attitude perhaps is to lay down and not care. Give no interest in sleeping at all. You're just lying down because that's what happens. Lie down and just relax. Eventually you will drift into a deep sleep. Easily and naturally. Easily. And simply, without any effort at all on your part, because you've done nothing and you don't have to do anything, just like with a bath, all you need to do to get wet is just lower your body into the bath or in a shower. Just turn the shower on and stand underneath. It's really easy. It's as easy as that. You don't have to think to yourself, I hope I get wet. What happens if the shower doesn't work? What am I going to do then? We don't have those thoughts. We just get underneath the shower, we turn it on, or you turn the water on first and then get into the shower. And you see this the water spraying down from the shower. And maybe you're standing on the on the floor, you know, before getting inside the shower. We don't think to ourselves, I wonder if I wonder if I'm gonna get wet. There's no question of it. Just like if you go to bed at night, 
You don't question whether it's going to be light in the morning or whether there's going to be a sunrise. Of course, if you get up very early, it might still be dark, but you know what I mean. We don't question that the sunrise will occur. You think about going to work on Monday, you don't question that the the building that you work in will still be there on Monday. We just assume it, we think nothing of it. And that's as natural as sleeping. Just expecting it. Expecting the same thing to happen that just naturally happens. And at the same time, not caring about it. Because caring about sleeping doesn't make it any easier. It's just going to happen naturally. If you lay in your bed not caring if you sleep or not, that won't stop you from sleeping. That just means that you'll just feel relaxed. You can just feel calm and enjoy the sense of your body relaxing and feeling loose. And then just letting those thoughts that may arise just float by like those clouds in the sky. Not trying to hold on to them. Therefore, not causing any obstructions. So instead of removing the obstruction, you just don't cause it in the first place. So there is no obstruction to remove. Which means that bridge between being awake and being asleep becomes shorter. And it's almost like a a downhill bridge. So you don't even have to walk it. It's like you just roll down. Or slide down. Look a slide. Sliding from the top. Gently and at a speed that's comfortable for you. Just sliding down into that sense of comfort. Sliding down. Enjoying that sense of peacefulness that is always there when you just relax into yourself. And just give up on trying to hold on to any particular thoughts. Just float away. Floating past like the clouds in the sky. Relaxing and calm, loose, 
really, really loose. So calm, your mind is so quiet and peaceful, quiet and peaceful. Counting down from five to one. When I get to one, you can feel ten times more peaceful, now, five, Oh.